Hello and welcome. My name is Ryan. I'm also known as RM2K Dev. In this video, we're going to be going over using RPG Maker VX window skins. We're just going to set up the very basic, the very the basis of our window system, so that we can start to display NPC dialogue, title screens, um, options to the player where they select yes or no, and, and things like that. So let's get started by first going up to sprites and creating a group. In this group, we're going to call this system. Underneath that group, let's create another group. We'll call this messaging. Um, actually, no, we'll call this window. And inside of that group, we'll create a sprite. And what we want to do is uh, we're going to call this sprite underscore window skin. What we do is we're going to load a sprite. Now, I've I've uh, got RPG Maker VX installed, so I'm going to navigate to my RTP window system skin set. And I'm just going to load in the window.png. If you don't have RPG Maker installed, just Google RPG Maker VX window skin, and you'll find plenty of these on Google. Now, what you'll see here is we've got this this image. We've got the background. We also have the sides of the window skin, so the borders. Um, we have the selection and the navigation option um, borders here, and we also have a transition effect here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select edit sprite and what I want to do is I want to import that and create it from a strip so what that will let us do is we're going to be able to select the sections now so we only want to import this border here for the moment so what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, images per row let's just make these 10 and 10 for now the image width and height is going to be 8 by 8 sorry let's make that 16 by 16 we want our horizontal pixel offset to be 0 and 0. Now the images per row, we can see it here, it's actually 4. So if we make that 4, what you'll see is it goes all the way down like that. And all we need to do is fill this out until we get the right amount of images. So it's 16 images. The next thing we need to do is set our horizontal cell offset to 4, and that will select the borders of this window for us. Now you'll see we've got all these pieces. We've also got the middle parts of that image as well. So that's image five, we're gonna delete. Image six, we're going to delete. Seven, and seven again. And now we have just the borders. So this is gonna be our reference sprite. So we'll just call this image window skin. If we create a new sprite, and call this one here sprite window underscore TL. That stands for top left. Go back into our old sprite, and copy the top left image. We're going to repeat this for all the different directions of our sprite. So we're going to have sprite window TL, sprite window T for top, sprite window TR for top right, sprite window ML for middle left, MR for middle right, we're going to have BL for bottom left, B for bottom, and BR for bottom right. Okay, once you've got all of these, you can go ahead and delete that first sprite window skin that we made, as we no longer need that, as it was just a placeholder for us to import the resource. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to add a group to our system object down here in objects. We're going to call this one here window. Create an object underneath that. We're going to call this object window base. Select OK. Now all we need to do is in our create event, sorry, um, in our draw event, draw, we're going to add a script. I'm going to call this draw under draw window. So now I'm not sure if these features are Game Maker um, Pro only or free only or whether or not they'll work in the free version or not. If these features don't work in the free version, 
you can create your windows as sprites. So, like I said, I'm not too sure if these work in the free version or not, but I'm using the master collection, so um, I've, I've always used the master collection, so I don't actually know whether or not these are available. So, just a forewarning, but if they don't work in the free version, you can get around this really easily by instead of chopping the window up into these little squares, into these little portions, just create a sprite that is the size of the window you want and arrange it correctly in that window and then you can just draw the sprite on the screen or select the object as this sprite but what I'm going to do is I think if you're using a the pro version or higher you can you can do this and you'll be able to get resizable windows So the first thing we want to do is say draw sprite, sprite window top left at the position X and Y. One other thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go into our window sprites, create another sprite, we're going to call this sprite window base. This just gives us something to work with. What we could actually do is we can edit the sprite, we can import that base that was in the, in the strip. So if we import the window as a strip again, this time we want to say the number of images is one, one image per row. We're going to start at the top left position and it's going to be 64 by 64. That's going to give us this base image here. So select OK and go back to our object window. Select the window base sprite. Now what we're going to do is we're going to test this out on our title screen. So if you go to the system window, object window base, and paste one down here, you'll notice you also get these options if you right click on it and go to instance properties. And they are scale X, scale Y. If we set our scale Y to 2, the height will double. If we set our scale X to say 5, the width will be 5 times larger. We're going to need it to be larger than that, so let's instance properties, let's make it eight. This is just a trial and error process until you get it to fill up the screen in a way that you like. So I think ours needs to be nine. nine. There we go. That's given us a 32 pixel border across the bottom edge, the left side and the right side edge. Now if we run our window, sorry, if we go back to our game state object and remove the start game script that we had last time, and just run the project, what you'll see is on the on the title screen you should have this message and it's just drawing that top left corner because that's where we've we've overwritten the the draw event just to draw that top left corner but what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a border across the entire object here. So go back to the object window base back into our draw event. The next sprite we're going to draw is the top row This one needs draw sprite x. Sorry, this one needs draw sprite stretched. This is going to be sprite window t for top, no sub image. The x is going to be width. Um, object window based on width. X and Y width at. So here we need to say sprite underscore width and sprite underscore height.
So what you see is we've got a bit of an issue here. This issue is because we've scaled the height as well. We don't want to scale the height. We only want to scale the width. So sprite height should be sprite window t dot sprite height. I think. No, that's not the one. Um, let's try putting this as 16 because we know that the image is 16 pixels high. Okay, so now you see that we've got the top border and the left border. Now this is a small issue here. This is because of draw order. We need to make sure that the corners are drawn last. So what we're going to call this is draw corners. And we'll call this one here draw HV axis. So this is our horizontal axis. We need to duplicate this, except this time we need it to be the X position, sorry, the Y position plus sprite underscore height. Now we have the bottom row. We're also going to need to create the side rows. This time we copy these two lines here. And this time it's going to be ML and then MR. Now the sprite width is going to be 16 for both of these. This one here doesn't need to be adjusted. We need to adjust this one. The second one is going to be plus sprite underscore width. And for our height, we need to set this one here to sprite underscore height. Sprite underscore height. Four corners. There we go. So we've got the four corners of our of our message box. The one thing to notice quickly is that this one here is 16 pixels off. We need to subtract 16 pixels from this because it's going to be 16 pixels wider because we're working from the top left corner of the image. So we need to say x position plus sprite width minus 16. And that should fix that issue for us. There we go. That's brought that back into line. So now we can draw the corners on. So we've already got the top left corner done. Let's do the top right corner. This is easy. This is just going to be the x position plus the width. Sprite underscore width minus 16 because we know that we're going to be 16 pixels off. There we go. So now we have the top right and the top left. We need to do the bottom right and the bottom left. So again, copy these and paste these under. This time call this one bottom left and bottom right. And in this one here, we need to set the y position to be plus sprite underscore height. There we go. Now if we run that again, you see we have the same issue. These are going to be vertically 16 pixels off. So we're going to subtract this by, I think that's 8, no that's 16 pixels. Let's subtract these by 16 pixels. So the Y position on these two corners is going to be negative 16, negative 16. Oh no, it must have been 8, negative 8, sorry, let's adjust those. Negative 10, we're just going to adjust this until it looks right. There we go, so it was negative 10. So now we have the border of our window. The only problem that you'll notice with it is these little corners here. And that's just because we're starting the horizontal bars um, at the very left pixel. So all we need to do is we just need to move those over. Let's say we move them over 8 pixels. So the X position for the top row is going to be plus 8. If we run that, you'll see that fixes the top left corner. Uh, and the vertical bar is now the one that's offending, so we're going to move that down. So if we go to our vertical bar, so remembering that the top two are vertical, sorry, horizontal, and the bottom two are vertical. So our Y position, 
our y position needs to be plus 8. And like I said guys, this is just a trial and error process, but once we get this border system up and running, we'll be able to create windows of any size and any dimension. You see that's fixed the top left corner. If you look at the top right corner, you'll notice that we're now 16 pixels further right than we should be. So we need to subtract 16 from our width. So if we go to our width for the horizontal bar, say it's set to sprite width. So we need to subtract 16 from that. We might actually need to subtract a little more, but it's trial and error. We're just going to keep doing this until we get it right. Okay, 16 was perfect, spot on. So from this bottom one here, we need to subtract six. We need to subtract eight. So from our vertical, it's already adding eight to the position, uh, the height. There we go. Minus sixteen. Minus sixteen. And let's have a look what that's given us. Now the bottom left corner and the bottom right corner are fixed. So the one other thing that we can do really quickly is we can draw a background. So if we say draw background. Let's just try this out first. We'll just say draw sprite. Oh, sorry, we'll just say draw self. That should fix that issue. And what you'll notice is we've got the background filled in. However, there is a small issue and that is that the top left and top right corners are offending again. So we need to push those down by eight pixels. We can do that by using a different command. So let's try draw underscore sprite and this time the sprite is going to be sprite window base sub image zero sorry draw sprite underscore stretched sprite window base sub image zero zero the x is going to be x plus eight the y is going to be y plus eight the width is going to be sprite width minus sixteen Right, height minus 16 for the height variable. Let's try that and see what that gives us. Okay, so we've obviously moved too far right and we've subtracted too much in. So let's move the, that back to say plus 4. Like I said, guys, it's trial and error. And this time, instead of subtracting 16, we'll subtract 8. Let's have a look what that gives us. Okay, so we've corrected the top left and the sides, we are still subtracting too much from the bottom. So if we go to our bottom, which is going to be height, and we'll, instead of subtracting 8, we'll subtract 4. And that's given us a perfect window. Now you might be thinking, wow, that took quite a long time, and it did, but let me show you the benefit of what that's going to give us. If we wanted to create more windows of different, different sizes and different heights, we now have an easy way to do it. We can adjust these to be vertical, we can adjust these in any direction basically. We can make them super wide, we can make them very small. It doesn't matter what sort of window that we're going to create here, we should be able to create it. And This is going to be the basis of every single window that we create for our game. So thank you guys for watching. Um, Follow me on Twitter, it's at rm2kdev. Please uh, like and comment on this video and share it as much as you can. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for watching again. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this.